If you want to buy cheap, reliable NBA 2K19 MT, please go to DVDJ.com, use the code CRUSH, and if you're not familiar with the process, you can contact them on Twitter. Both links will be in the description. What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video and here we are today predict the Los Angeles Lakers offseason. This offseason could go really well for the Lakers and it also could go really bad. It's already off kind of to a bad start with Magic Johnson stepping down out of nowhere. Not really informing anybody just kind of surprising the whole Lakers organization by doing it and uh, we'll have to see where they go from here but um, obviously the Lakers will probably try to revisit that Anthony Davis trade possibly, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think uh, Boston has a really good chance at getting Anthony Davis. The Knicks, I feel like, have a better shot. I just don't think Anthony Davis is coming to the Lakers. Uh, I mean, he could, and you know, that's great and all, but I just, in my predictions, I don't see it. I think there's going to be other teams that are going to have a little bit better offers than the Lakers. And plus, um, now that Magic Johnson has stepped down, I don't think the Pelicans are going to want to give the Lakers to Anthony Davis. Because if the Pelicans wanted to give Anthony Davis to the Lakers, they would have done it already at the trade deadline. Maybe they wanted to wait and see if Boston would offer something better. But now that um, David Griffin is the, what do you call it, the GM of the Pelicans, I think that uh, he did already say on like live TV what he would do in this situation. And now he is in that situation. So... I feel like that uh, David Griffin will be trading up to Boston most likely if Boston is still interested. Obviously, they should be, but we'll have to wait and see. But as far as the Lakers are concerned, uh, you know, I don't expect a whole lot to change for them. I don't, maybe they'll do trade a couple of their players here and there, but I think that for the most part, they're going to try to look for another star next to LeBron, of course. And um, really, I can only see one star coming to the Lakers. Let's go ahead and skip to the draft lighter results. And we get uh, what pick? we get whoa we jumped all the way to number two holy crap and the wizards got number one that is pretty wild um wasn't expecting that uh realistically you know what it could happen in real life so we're gonna just leave it because uh the lakers could jump up to number one the wizards could jump up to number one that's how the lottery is this year so um it's not impossible luke walton as we all know has been fired and then they're they're gonna be interviewing a couple or a few Candidates, we got Tyron Lu, Monty Williams, but and then there was someone else I can't remember at the top of my head. But I think the I think what they'll end up doing is hiring Tyron Lu. If I'm completely honest with you, I just feel like that's gonna happen. I'm just waiting for it to happen. So I'm gonna assign Tyron Lu because I in my predictions I think that the Lakers will end up just getting Tyron Lu. So let's skip right to the NBA draft now that we have the second pick overall, and it's pretty crazy actually. So for the salary cap table. Uh, we'll wait till we get to that. But now we have the second pick overall. Uh, Zion Williamson wouldn't fit next to LeBron James, but one player that would. I'm expecting them to have taken Zion. John Morant. Could the Lakers take... Or, no, nah, I'm sorry if I said his name wrong. Ja. I'll just say Ja because it's always controversial when I say his name. But Ja or RJ Barrett. Who do I take in this situation? Lonzo Ball. Uh, this is a weird situation to be in. So... Draft summary, the Wizards took Zion, we got the Hawks next, uh, the Lakers, so we have Lonzo Ball, we could take Ja though, and I might, you know, if the Lakers found themselves in this situation, would they take Ja or would they take RJ Barrett or Cam Reddish to be a nice shooter next to LeBron? Um, that's a good question, that's a very good question, I'm not sure what I want to do in this situation. Ceiling, Damian Lillard, All-NBA, Floor, Spud, Webb, Starter, Strengths, Unselfish, Skilled ball distributor makes the occasional mistake. Excellent at both driving lane and scoring when he gets to the rim. Pretty cool, actually. I've never actually read this stuff before. Stats: uh, three point scoring has got a B position average, C minus three point shot. RJ Barrett has got a B plus. I think RJ Barrett makes a little bit more sense in this situation next to LeBron. So I'm gonna take RJ here, and then we can keep Lonzo Ball at you know his spot. So as much as Jaw. Uh, he went to the Hawks, which I don't think that makes a lot of sense because they have Trey Young already, but that's okay. We get RJ Barrett next to LeBron James, who I think will fit seamlessly. We can go ahead and sign all these guys back. And then uh, qualifying offers, we have none. And then we'll get into free agency. Like I said, there's one player I do think the Lakers have a chance at, and that's probably... I'm not going to resign Rondo. I'm not going to resign any of these guys. I'm going to try to get as much money as I can. I know Anthony Caruso, he was balling, but... Um, I'll probably end up resigning him if possible. But there is one player I do want to get, and uh, he might cost a little bit more than 27 mil, so I might have to trade somebody. 
But for a player that I think might be coming to the Lakers, I know Kyrie Irving is a huge rumor, but I think Jimmy Butler is their best shot at a player in free agency. I really do. I think Jimmy Butler, um, depending on how the 76ers keep playing in their playoffs, I think that's their best chance. Maybe even Kimba, uh, depending on if he wants to go somewhere else. But I really think that uh, Jimmy Butler, maybe even Kimba, like I said, I could see them having a chance at Kimba, though, because Kimba might want to be somewhere else. He did kind of hint at that in his off-season post-interview or whatever you call it, reflecting on the season. So Kimba Walker, I could see that. Jimmy Butler, I could see that as well. But if we're going to get Kimba, that would definitely put a huge dent in whatever uh, we're going to do with Lonzo. I don't know what we're going to do with him if we get Kimba. But like I said, I think Jimmy Butler is a huge shot. There's a huge chance we get Jimmy Butler. So one player is going to have to be traded to give us a little bit more of that money. And I think I'm going to have to trade Maurice Wagner and Isaac Bonga or something. Give us that extra money so he can sign. Um, Mitchell Robinson, I don't expect that to happen. But, you know, if we could just trade these two for a couple of second rounders from Brooklyn, I think that would be just fine. And then we have the money to sign one of these guys. So now we have 31.43 million. We can't get Kyrie Irving still. Or can we get Kyrie Irving? I'll try. You know what? I'll give Kyrie Irving a contract just because it is a huge rumor out there. I'm also going to give Jimmy Butler his contract. And I'll even give Kimba his contract. So one of these three guys I could see going to Los Angeles. I think Klay Thompson is good as gone as he's going to resign to um, the Warriors, I feel like. And then everyone else, I don't know. So Kimba and Jimmy Butler, Kimba, Kyrie, and Jimmy. Let's see who we get. We can get any of them. Who do I want? Now, I think Kyrie is a wild card. And I could see him going to New York. I think if Kyrie's leaving Boston, he's going to New York. So Kimba or Jimmy Butler. So let's eliminate Kyrie. Kimba or Jimmy Butler. Um, I'm going to say they have a better chance. I mean, Kimba Walker makes more sense to me just because we do have, we just drafted RJ Barrett and we could play LeBron James. Yeah, I think Kimba makes more sense. And I think there's a huge chance that Kimba is as good as gone from loss, uh, from Charlotte. And I think a point guard, um, you know, they could say... They want to keep Lonzo Ball though, so this is hard, man. Like, cause if you if you sign Kemba, I think Lonzo Ball, you got to decide what you're gonna want to do with him. So, I think Jimmy Butler, I think is the better chance at uh, Jimmy Butler being signed, and that's just my opinion. I mean, you guys could tell me what you think down in the comment section, but I think Jimmy Butler, there's more of a chance that uh, Jimmy Butler comes to Los Angeles. But we're gonna move Jim, Jimmy Butler. Oh my gosh, you guys probably didn't hear that noise, but there was a the trash can companies here, trash companies here again. Kind of scared me. All right, anyway, LeBron James, Ingram, Kuzma. Uh, now we need a center. Well, that's definitely a huge need for us. And uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to afford a decent one. Brooke Lopez would make so much sense for this team. But I think uh, he's good as going back to Milwaukee. I do not see Milwaukee letting that guy go anywhere because he was such a good player for their team. Thomas Bryant, Dwayne Denman, Rashawn Holmes, Nerds Noel, Boban, Marjanovic. Yeah, the starting center is a huge need at this point. And so when you look at your roster, you kind of need a starting center badly. And I could definitely see this team, you know, getting maybe pretty aggressive and going after a better center. So Josh Hart possibly being traded and maybe even Brandon Ingram on his last year of his deal, possibly. Brandon Ingram did start balling at the end of the year, but I don't know. Montrezl Harrell does make sense, but he is a little bit small to be a starting center, I feel like. Uh, Buddy Heald, Frank Nilakina, Mohamed Bamba, Boban, or not Boban, Bo Yan, uh, Marcus Moore Sr., Derek Favors, TJ Warren, Robert Covington, Bobby Portis. So Montrezl Harrell was the best offer we got to the Clippers. And um, I don't know, could we, should we do this deal? We get Montrezl Harrell, who's, you know, not a starting, he's going to be a small ball guy, kind of guy, but you know what? Montrezl Harrell, not, actually not going to do that. Let's not do that. And then, uh, so let's try to just sign a center, I guess, because I feel like Brandon Ingram is going to be a huge player to this team. JaVale McGee, we could just resign him, disappointingly, but he probably don't want to come for that much money. He did play pretty well. Brook Lopez, Zubac. Uh, Zubac, bring him back. Thomas Bryant. We could afford Thomas Bryant. No, he was on the Lakers at one point, and the Lakers traded him. Dwayne Dedman. I could see them just signing a guy like Dwayne Dedman, possibly. Just to fill that void there because they really don't have anyone to play the center spot right there so and then they could just sign like robin lopez or something and then call those their starting centers 
And then if that doesn't work out too well, we can just go for like someone else. So Lonzo, let's see what we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we have Josh Hart as well. But um, I guess Josh Hart could play that kind of that backup point guard role or something. So we'll leave it like that, guys. I think we'll just leave it like that. You know, it's not too bad. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have a nine minute rotation. It's not the best nine minute rotation, but uh, really what I think you see from the Lakers this offseason, either they are going to trade um, some of their young players or they're going to keep them and just try to sign someone like Jimmy Butler or Kimba or even Kyrie possibly. But uh, I don't really see a situation where they get Kawhi or uh, Kevin Durant. I just don't. I think those two superstars are definitely not looking at the Lakers in that way. I think they kind of want to stay from that drama. I mean, the drama didn't really help Los Angeles, I think, at the trade deadline because it just makes players kind of want to stay away from that situation, if you ask me. But I could be totally wrong. You know, maybe some players aren't so scared of this situation and wouldn't mind being Los Angeles like that. I think Los Angeles Clippers, though, is a better looking destination, if you ask me. But um, I don't know. Some players might want to play next to LeBron James. So uh, actually, we're not going to load a download draft class because this is an offseason predictions video, not a rebuild. So uh, training camps, let's go on top potential. We want all these guys getting as good as they possibly can get. We got Brandon Ingram. Let's get him up there. Then let's get um, Lonzo Ball up to an A plus if we can. Let's get Kuzma up as well got a b plus potential so that should be good and then uh we'll mess with brandon ingram's tendencies i think because uh his tendencies kind of suck um tendency all right here we go so brandon ingram got tendency i want this up i want this up i want you shooting shots my man so got close tendency i want this man shooting that's for sure i want this man to shoot the ball uh shot under basket tendency see what else we got um Got close left tendency. Like his tendencies are kind of down. That's for sure. So maybe I could see why Brandon Ingram doesn't have much of a. But uh, just move these up a little bit. Um, shot mid range. I'm going to leave that and just leave all those. Uh, shot spot up three off screen. Hopefully he plays a little bit better. Let me know if there's some other things I have to change about tendencies in order for them to. Play a little bit better but uh nine minute rotation we got lonzo jimmy butler lebron james kyle kuzma deadman brandon ingram rj barrett josh hart and shelvin mack all off the bench and we even have rondo back which is greater so um i definitely wanted robin lopez to get those last few minutes if not mike scott would be cool too because we do need kind of a you know a stretch big off the bench wouldn't be so bad so uh, let's give Mike Scott those last few minutes, I guess, because we don't need a backup guard. We got RG Barrett and Josh Hart playing that role. So um, not too shabby. I'm going to go ahead and simulate this one season, see how the Lakers do. Obviously, they should make the playoffs with what we got. But, you know, 2K never fails to surprise me. So we'll see what happens. At the end of the season, Stephen Curry wins MVP. Rookie of the year goes to Zion Williamson on the Washington Wizards. Gordon Hayward wins sixth man. Anthony Davis wins defense player and DeAndre Ayton goes to most improved and Mike Budenholzer is your coach of the year All NBA first team. We got LeBron making it at the age of 35 pretty cool stuff there All NBA second team is what it is and then Damian Lillard Zion Wow Zion making the all NBA third team in his first season Jimmy Butler makes it all defensive second team we did make the playoffs for the fifth seed. So at one point we were doing really good, you know, on track to win like 50 games, 60, 50 to 60 games. But then we got to this point. Where was it? Like this point in the calendar. And we just lost like so many games. It's kind of annoying. Like I was starting to get really irritated. I'm like, why are we losing so many games? But you know what? You know, we did prevail, we made the playoffs. So that's good, I guess. Player stats. We got LeBron James with uh, 26 points. Cool stuff. Kuzma with 16. Jimmy Butler with 15 and a half points. No, I'd like to see his point differential a little bit better. Brandon Ingram with 14 and RJ Barrett with 13 off the bench. So Lonzo Ball with eight and seven, not too shabby. Deadman eight and eight, you know, not the best center in the world, but you know, he gets the job done and he can stretch the floor a little bit. So um, I think he is a decent starter, I guess, for this Lakers team. But uh, we are facing Utah in the first round. I think I kind of want to fix something when it comes to the coach game plan. Uh, or the yeah coach. So let's go to system proficiency proficiency. Uh, they want to grit and grind uh, What else we got? 
active or what's this four star one um pace in space we're gonna make that make that our our uh system proficiency and then we're gonna mess with this a little bit and i want jimmy but i want lebron scoring first obviously and i want jimmy butler getting them shots too so lebron and jimmy butler i want to be more aggressive so let's simulate current round against these utah jazz i think we should be able to beat them but you know you never know with 2k they're up 2-0 to start we have lebron freaking james and you're telling me we're about to get swept what maybe i shouldn't have changed anything okay so we got swept trust me when i tell you this lebron james wouldn't ever get swept in the playoffs man brandon ingram lebron 18 and 9 jimmy butler where are you six freaking points six points i make you the second second scorer on the team and you give me six points in game four what kind of crap is that brandon ingram was the best scorer in that game all right guys well that's going to be the end of the video, I guess. Let me know what you guys think about the Lakers this offseason, what you think they're going to do, and uh, what you think your favorite team will do. We're going to keep just grinding through these. I think the next video will be uh, the Wizards, so that should be an interesting one. But we got Washington over Boston in four because they have Zion Williamson, obviously. If the War Wizards actually won the championship just because they have Zion, I'm done, dude. That's so ridiculous. Zion's a cheat code. With Bradley Beal and John Wall would be pretty nice, so... Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely enjoyed uh, definitely enjoyed this one. Leave a like if you did as well. This is Crushables, 